Hello and welcome to today's webinar, which is entitled The 15 Coolest Features in Office 365 That Will Skyrocket Your Productivity. In this webinar, you're going to learn about new ways to get more done in less time using common programs such as Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. But before we get started, let me introduce the companies. Most of you will be aware of IT Force. We're an award-winning managed services company based here in Dublin too. And joining us today on the webinar is Michael Coyle of Micro Warehouse. So just to introduce Michael a bit, um, he is a technical enablement specialist with Micro Warehouse and is an Office 365 expert. And Micro Warehouse themselves are the largest Irish-owned IT distributor and they provide software, hardware, printers, accessories, etc. So just a little bit about the webinar itself. Um, we're aiming for approximately 30 minutes with 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. And if you would like to ask a question, and we'd welcome questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat box that you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen. And we'll get to as many questions as we can at the end. So just to note, we're also recording the webinar, so a copy of it will be made available to you, and it will be distributed afterwards. So please feel free to share that with your colleagues in your company. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Michael. Michael, are you all set? Thanks, Russian. Thanks for the introduction. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Yeah, so we've we've concentrated on, say, 15, um, like, say, tips around um, your office applications. I know, like, people on the call here today, they probably have seen some of these, uh, but there's always going to be some new features as well that you weren't aware of. I'm just starting off here with number 15. So we're looking here at uh, real-time co-authoring. Now this feature is actually available in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, okay? So I'll give you an example on this here is, I have a deadline uh, this afternoon. I need to get a document out. I have, like say, you know, three or four people that will input into the actual uh, Word document. So in real time, so I'll give an example on this here is, I could have a call with them, share my screen, and actually see people making changes. So I might have the finance person looking after this finance side of it. I might have legal looking after another part of it. I might have an account manager as well. But I, I can actually see the changes in uh, real time in that as well. And what I really like about this is, you know, the document is in, say OneDrive or SharePoint, okay? You share the link to the, the document. So what we're getting away from here is actually sharing documents, but actually sharing the, 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 the link in that, okay? And then you can see, you know, people making changes. There's version control built in. So for example, if a change is made and you want to return it back to a, to a previous version uh, as well, you can go back to this here. But this is uh, real-time uh, co-authoring. And as I said, like it's available in Word, Excel, and uh, Power point now it's probably something that not everybody will need but there's always cases where you know you're under pressure on deadlines so it's a, again really good feature okay so that's uh, co-authoring we'll just go to the next feature here uh, and that is uh, editing a PDF file in Word okay now this this actually has been around since 2013 okay um, so now it, let, let's call it straight up. This is not going to have the full versions of maybe say Adobe Acrobat. Okay, so when you buy, you know, a product like uh, Adobe Acrobat, you're spending a lot of money for that. Okay, but this is built into um, Word 2013 and, ab and above on that. Okay, but what you can do here is say, for example. I'm a company, uh, I work in, say for example, recruitment, okay? So I get loads of CVs into into the uh, into the company and that, okay? And some people send it across in PDF. So either I go and use the, the purchase copy of Acrobat, more than likely not everybody will have that, maybe one or two people within the organization has it in that, or do I ring back the candidate and kind of say, can you send me on a Word version, okay? Um, now with Word, you can actually open the um, the actual PDF with inside Word as well. Okay. Now it, there's a couple of things to note on, on this as well. You know, just something slightly different on this. Most people know that if you want to create a PDF within Word, you can do that. You just go down to the print option and then print to to PDF and that there. This does work best normally. What I've seen if there's loads of text and that there. So let's let's give an example on here and just uh, share the screen and that. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see uh, my screen here. So this is uh, a Word document I have opened up. Okay. So it's just a blank Word 
Word document, I go into File, I go into Open, and then I go Browse. Now, okay, let's look at, it'll show up my recent documents. So I'm gonna browse, and I'm gonna go to my desktop, click on desktop, and I've got some PDFs in here. So this is just a, an example on here. So it's a, a CV, and I click on Open, and it normally takes, you know, like say 10, 15 seconds in that there. And there it has converted it into, into Word in that, okay? So you can see there, you know, what, I'll, what I'm gonna do here now is just gonna, gonna close down this as well, like and open it up in the PDF version. But you can see here, like say for example, if I want to go in here and say for example, you know, uh, have a look at it here and that I can go and check it. So this here was actually images that, that came across. But if I close out of this here and, Go into here uh, and I open up the PDF version of it. There is the PDF version of it, okay? So you can see uh, the, the PDF side of it and that like so. But again, that's opening up um, uh, PDFs in words and that so. But again, I've seen this like a, of a real benefit in accounts. I've seen it in different, uh, different parts of the business and that as well. Okay. So next one on here is uh, do things quickly uh, with tell me, okay? One of the one of the big things you find within um, Word, Excel, and that is the ribbon up at the very top. I'm not sure where to go to get something, okay? So sometimes I can go and you know spend a bit of time going through different parts on it, okay? This is a text field where you can enter words and phrases about what you want to do next and quickly, get to the features you want to use or actions you want to perform. Now, you will see this in certain versions of Word that's called search and that as well. So search, tell me, it's the, it's the exact same in that, okay? So again, if I come out of here, go into Word and that. So let me just check to see here as well. Um, so I'm gonna check something else as well. Okay, so if I go up to search here, click on there and I go insert, sorry, just one second, uh, insert. And so I can go like say, insert picture and it'll tell me where to go and do it in that there. So I click on there and look for my picture in that. Now again, that's, you know, sometimes you're looking for insert, you're looking for draw, you're going to different parts on the actual uh, ribbon and that as well. Like, you know, so, but again, this search just brings you directly to what, what you need in that as well. Also, like I've seen things about say formatting, you know, as well, like, you know, so I might want to format uh, the, the, the the document, you know, have like say spacing and that as well. If I type it in there, um, it makes, makes things easier. And that is available as well on the online version as well. Like, you know, on the online version, Version, you'll always see the tell me and that so if you go into word and you have the online version you'll, you'll always uh, see that as well like you know so now next one we're going to look at here is called dictate your documents in word i'm just um I'm going to do another demo on this as well. Like, you know, so if you're like me and give an example, you're um say your words per minute are, are not great in that as well. Like, you know, so so instead of typing, you can use the uh, dictate the voice recognition on this here on Word, uh, Outlook and PowerPoint as well. Now, what I like about this here is uh, it's, you know, there's no training your voice. You know, this here works pretty straightforward and that's, you know, so there's not, you know, getting certain words, even with somebody um, with, with my accent as well. Like, you know, so now, the one thing I would say here is with live demos, um, you know, certain things can go wrong as well. But look, we'll give this here a go and that's so the dictate option. So we'll go into Word. So we've got uh, Word opened up. We'll go back to home and you'll see the dictate option uh, opened here. OK, so let's give this here a go. Uh, click on dictate. You type all day long to get things done. Full stop. Responding to email, writing documents, and creating presentations to communicate your ideas. Full stop. Sometimes this gets tiring. Full stop. Your fingers get sore, your wrists hurt, or maybe using a keyboard is difficult for you. Full stop. Do you ever wish you could just talk to your computer and have it right? New paragraph. 
Now you can with the dictate option in Office. Okay, so we'll... okay, so you can see there it's got most things uh, correct apart from the right part of it. But you've seen there how easy it was to actually do it in that as well. Like you know, so now again, I'm starting to see um, you know certain industries use this here uh, more and more as well. Like you know, so but again, this is a feature you know available in the latest version of uh, Word. Okay, so. Just going on to the next one here. So I'm just going to come out here. Okay, so that's the dictate option in that as well. Now we, we've touched on before 11, customize the ribbon in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, okay? Now, if, if you were using, like say Word in 2003, like hopefully there's, there's nobody out there still using 2003. The big change that was made between 2003 and 2007 was the introduction of the ribbon, okay? The reason Microsoft up with the ribbon there was to, instead of making three and four clicks to get something, that you just went up to the ribbon and you clicked it. Now you can see with the ribbon, there's a lot of clutter in that as well. But what you can do as well is go in and actually customize the ribbon to your own liking, okay? So you can actually put in, like say, things that you're gonna use more and more often and have it available in the very first um, first tab in that as well, like, you know, so now what's what's good about this in the, in the later versions as well is your customization on Word could be completely separate to Excel and to PowerPoint. It's, it's one of these things that, okay, it's gonna take me a couple of minutes, you know, five, 10 minutes to kind of customize it and that. But again, it's gonna make you more, um, you know, productive uh, long run. And really the idea of today's webinar uh, was, you know, tips that can make your, your life a lot easier in that as well, or that you just weren't aware uh, that, that, that were available. Okay, so now this one here, so using your mouse as a, a laser pointer, okay? Now I would have been on, like say quite a few, um, you say webinars and that there, like, you know, so, and did not realize, you know, that that, that was available in that, like, you know, so, um, and it's, it's, it's a really good feature in that, like, you know, so uh, if I look it up here, I've got, like, say here, now I can use the ink in here, highlight that, highlight this here, uh, go across and that there, pointer and that there. So that's the inking version of it again. But he, again, you can see the, you know, the, the pointer. So it's control P and uh, to do this here. Um, and you know, if you wanna highlight say certain figures, certain things and that as well. So just, you know, like it's it's the control P option. Um, but again, this feature has been available for, for quite a while in, in PowerPoint. Okay. So going on to nine, now this is a really good feature on here. So uh, PowerPoint designer, this is only coming now in the, later, the latest version of Office and that, okay? So PowerPoint designer improves slides for Office 365 subscribers but by automatically generating design ideas to choose from, okay? One of the things I find when you're doing presentations, you know, getting the text there is pretty straightforward, but trying to make it kind of interesting um, or, you know, having images in, as well, you know, so uh, and they're in the right locations as well and formatted it correctly. So what this will do here is when you're actually putting in the text, when you're putting in the information that the over on the right hand side, the design IDs will pop up and that will give you like say real life options and you know, okay, it's up to you to decide do you want to use it or not and that like, you know, but I, I've, it's, it's funny, I've seen, you know, uh, some really good presentations from like say some of the, um, my colleagues in here and they've more or less said that it's by using PowerPoint designer like it's the usual things about like presentations don't put too much information on the slides but again it's how you know the information is is readable as well so that's PowerPoint uh, designer okay Excel uh, so we've gone from Word uh, to PowerPoint to Excel now there's quite you know some people on the call here might spend, you know, a, a good part of their day on uh, Excel. You know, other people mightn't spend much. You know, you've got different options out there. But we just want to show a couple of features on here. So this here is the ability, you know, for example, you're, um, you're writing about in it there and um, 
you see some information you want to take uh, you know, a picture of. So you're using your Android phone or tablet, and that, you take a picture and uh, you convert that into Excel and that, okay? So then you can actually manipulate the data to your own liking and that as well. Like, you know, so the key part on here is that you're converting an image into uh, an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can go ahead, you know, you can use other features after it, like say, you know, conditional formatting is, is a feature where you know for example you know you've got sales figures and you know say anybody that's under 4,000 you know you want to market it in red anybody that's above it you want to market it in green just make it more interactive and that as well like you know so but again this ability on here is really just about you know taking the actual uh, image and converting it in and again very very simple to do in that as well like you know so uh, and you can do this on your on your phone Okay, one of the more uh, advanced sides on, like, say, um, Excel, you know, you've got Power Query, Power Pivot, like any Excel gurus out there, they live on, like, say, Power Pivot and that as well. But this is something called Power, uh, power Map in Excel. So it's turning data into, uh, into a map and that, okay? So this is where, you know, you can actually visualize the actual data and that, okay? So you can actually create, like say a short uh, video on that uh, to go through. So you might be doing a presentation to, you know, to to a customer or to a team and that as well. You you know, you might have data on like say, you know, different countries and different counties in Ireland and that as well. Like, you know, so there's a, um, there's a very famous one out there about the economic recession and that where he used, you know, uh, parts of, like, say, Power Map and that as well. Like, you know, so, but again, it's just making the data more visual instead of having it, like, say, in your columns and rows and that there, like, you know, so, but again, that's uh, Power Map, okay? Now, we're going into Microsoft Teams. Now, I don't know um, how many people are, first of all, is anybody using Teams in that, okay? So just give you a background on it. So Microsoft released uh, Microsoft Teams about two years ago, okay? Now, it's probably starting in the last couple of months to get uh, more, you know, traction in the market and that. So it's been a replacement for Skype for Business, okay? So for example, if you use Skype for Business, you use it for instant messaging, okay? So you IM the colleague. Instead of sending them an email, you might have sent them an instant message, okay? You knew they were available and you, um, you know, you got a real-time reply back in that as well, like, you know, so uh, with Skype for Business, you could also set up meetings and that as well, so people could share videos, you know, you could share desktops and that as well, like, you know, so uh, where Teams, you know, extends that functionality is around, I might be working on a project, so say, take for example, I've got a project and I want to share all the information on the actual project, so I want all the documents residing in this here, I might have, like, say, you know, two or three different parts to this project. I can separate it out in channels and that as well. I can also invite external people and that as well, but it's part of uh, Office 365. But just a couple of features just wanna to touch on here is a big term within Microsoft at the moment is a term called artificial intelligence, AI in that as well. So here's four features uh, on the AI side of it. So inline message translation. So for example, I might have a communication with somebody else or, you know, w with an IM in Teams, you can have uh, one to one or one to 50 in that, okay? Um, but what, if I'm sending somebody an IM, English mightn't be their, you know, default language and that there. So they can actually translate it into their actually default language in that as well, you know, just to get a better understanding on what was said in that as well. Also, you've got meeting recording transcription. This is where you're in a meeting and it's picking up you know the voice and it's transcribing you know the contents that everybody's saying and that as well like you know so again you know um it makes it more interactive and that as well like you know so next part on here is something called mobile companion mode um this is sometimes like a couple, a couple examples on this here is i join a meeting in teams on my phone and say I'm walking into the office and I, the meeting's gonna go on for an hour, I can easily switch between my phone and uh, my laptop and that as well, I'll stick on my headsets and that, so I seamlessly you know, integrate into that. But also as well, I might want to take out my phone, I'm in a meeting and I wanna show a video um, 
you know, in the office of something through my phone instead of using my laptop. Maybe my laptop, you know, didn't have a camera or whatever it is in that as well. Like, so that's mobile companion mode. And the very last feature on here is something called uh, background blur, okay? So background blur is, you know, when you're um, when you're sharing your video and uh, you want to blur out the background, okay? So you know, like rule of thumb, never leave, um, you know, like a door in your background and that, like you know, so because you know, I, I can imagine some people might have seen this here, but you go on um, a TV um, news show for the BBC, uh, you're a professor and uh, you are talking about South Korea and Okay, what what could go wrong? Uh, what's the worst that can happen, really? Um. <laughs> Now, in fairness to Professor Kelly in that, uh, he did take that in very good, um, you know, just not there. Like, you know, uh, I can imagine if, if it happened to some other, well, politicians at the moment, it, it mightn't have happened. Uh, it mightn't have happened uh, as, as, they mightn't have taken it as easy and that, like, you know, so. But again, that's background blur in that, okay? And I've, I've been on meetings as well, where somebody, you know, they might have, like, say, a window in the background, there's light coming in and they just, they just cancel it. You can also, there's a new feature coming to it. If you wanted, like, you know, to put a background yourself on as well, you can actually customize the background as well, like, you know, so, okay. So we touched on before about, um, you know, document co-authoring and that as well. Like, you know, so this is the ability here to, like say, share files. So instead of trying to email the document, give an example on here. So um, I've got a document and it's 100, uh, 100 meg, right? So it's gone away over the, the limit, okay? Now, depending on what email system you're using that, like, you know, it, you could get up to like say 30 meg and that like you know so generally with 365 it's around 2025 20, and that okay but instead of me sharing the document why don't i share a link to the document and that as well like you know so again i copy this on to maybe say my onedrive for business account and that and then i just share the link in that uh, also as well what i can do here is like give an example on here is if i um you know, I only want to share the document for the next week in that, okay? I can put an expiry on this as well. Like, you know, so I could share it with people inside the organization. I can share it with, uh, you know, people that have existing access. I can also uh, select uh, specific people in that as well. Or I can just copy the link as well and bring it into, you know, uh, an Outlook email and then send it out through there and that. So, but again, You'll see that option as well within the Word, Excel, clients and that as well. When you click on the share option, it'll it'll bring you into something similar to that. Like, you know, so uh, just one second here, uh, discard. And so if I look it up here, I've got a share option there in PowerPoint. If I go into Word, I've got a share option, you know, there, I click on that, like, you know, so I click on share in that. Like, so, but again, just gives you, gives you the, the option in that, so. Okay, so let's go into this. And again, it is something, you know, th th there's a feature down the bottom there as well. If you don't want the person to download the document, you can stop them from downloading the document in that as well. So, you know, security is a, is a key thing now at the moment. Uh, so, you know, th this, is, th this is a really good feature in that as well. Okay, so Office 365 message encryption, okay? Now, this is something I would say to you, like say for example, you're using Office 365, you know, speak to your your um, you know account manager in IT Force on on message encryption because it's not available on, on all plans and that as well. But give an example on here, I um, I need to send a document out to somebody in that, okay? But I do not want it uh, forwarded, okay? Or uh, for example, I'm sending a document to two or three people internally. I do not want them to forward that document document externally in that okay so generally what happens on here now this is the web version you've got the protect button up there you click on the protect and you've got a list of options you know so it could be the confidential internal only it could be you know encrypt the email or you know it could be do not forward you know so but again that is called uh, message encryption
Okay, message recall. Uh, so, for example, I sent a mail to someone within, with, you know, internally in error. I realized quickly that the wrong person has received the email. They haven't opened the email. Um, you know, you can actually recall the, the actual message in that. So, let's just have a quick look at this here option. So, in Outlook, okay. So, if I go into Outlook in that and I open up a new email. And I'm going to send it to Steve. Now, if anybody's Line of Duty fans, uh, you'll you'll see a common trend here with with the names and that there. So I'm going to call the subject Farm Machinery, and uh, I'm going to go I Steve, where did you park the tractor? Now you might say, why why am I not using the dictate? Because I'm so, so slow on that. But anyway, look, so so I go here and I click on send. The other thing I like as well is, and I'll just do something else. Uh, find attached the document. Now what I like now in the litter versions on here is when I click go to send, it'll actually prompt me are you sure you haven't forgot to attach something because I've, I, it's actually picked up the text and that okay that's not available you know in the older versions of uh, outlook and that okay but i'm going to send anyway okay so i sent on the email and then i realized you know it wasn't actually meant for steve arnott it was meant for for somebody else and that there so what i would do on here is i would open up the email okay Click on actions and I would go recall this message. Okay. Now with the recall option, you do get a couple of options here. Do you know, do you want to delete unread copies of this message or delete uh, the copy and replace with a new message? Okay. Tell me if the recall succeeds or fails for each recipient and that as well. Now this demo here will 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 not see this here because it's a demo tenant. Fortunately, I couldn't use my live environment because be guaranteed somebody would send me a message that was irrelevant and that but anyway so that's me making the recall there now what will happen on here is maybe after a minute or two it'll actually come up saying you know recall successful now the key part from the other side is that the other person hasn't actually opened the message okay it might be in their reading pane they might see it but they haven't actually opened the message but you'll actually see receive a message coming back here you know recall successful and that as well okay so that is message recall now we're nearly there we've just got uh two more to do and that there you know this is another one uh which is an interesting uh feature in that as well like you know so uh i, I do remember somebody getting badly caught out uh one night where an email was sent and they were standing in front of us and that like you know so this is the case where for example you know you might need to send an email but you might want to send it you know uh, at a later time and that okay there might be a certain reason behind that okay so what you do is you write up the email you go into more options up at the top you go delay delivery and then you know you pick the time and that and then you click on send okay uh, and then you know you're going to pick the time when you want that send and that like you know so but again that's sending an email at a future date okay now go down to the very last one here is create rules for email now this is an old one but one of the big things you're trying to do here is actually manage your mailbox okay so you know it used to be kind of like a badge you know well i got you know a thousand emails yesterday you know i got whatever you know now you're just trying to make things you know relevant like it's like things for example i i am um, subscribe subscribe to certain kind of like podcasts and you know there's email sent out and that so i have a folder set up that it will move uh the, the the emails that come in from that email address directly in there as well you can become more creative than that as well like you know so but again you know this is you know it's one of the most you know important parts i find in that like i remember when i just spent about say 15 20 minutes with rules go and check what emails you get you know so now sometimes you don't want to block these emails you just want to put them in and you might look at them uh, later and like especially if you work in it you get a lot of uh, alert messages in that as well okay so that is the end of my side i'm going to pass it back to kieran and, and russian and that so um i hope that was helpful um we did go through that uh, fairly quickly and that the, the one thing i would say to you is like even though the the, the the this the one there about the message recall 
go and test that out yourself with a colleague in that because it's actually pretty interesting because you know you see it and then when you recall it the message just comes out because they haven't opened it up okay thank you very much okay and thanks michael just, yeah we'll just go to some uh q a and that so Lovely. Thank you very much. And you did really good for timing there because we're bang on where we should be at this point in the webinar. So we have a couple of questions. Um, the first one that I have is, um, what version of Office are these features available on? Yeah, I, I, that, that, that's, that's the most common question in that. You know, one of the challenges you find a lot is within a company, you know, uh, I'm able to do a certain feature and then somebody else's because they've got you know uh, different versions most of the versions uh, most of the features I showed there are an office 365 feature with office 365 you are actually kept up to date with the latest version of uh, of office and that one or two features like the open the PDF was available in 2013 and that okay you know customizing the ribbon the ribbons just been about but most of the, like say for example the designer um, in in PowerPoint like say uh, that's co-authoring that's an office 365 feature and that like you know so and I, I would recommend you know it, it, there's a lot of other things around security and the big advantage of having the latest version is that everybody is working on, on the, the latest version and you've got a, a quite a bit of security features that, that we haven't really touched on um, as well like you know so Okay, so maybe the thing there to do is um, for anybody who is interested in features here and they're not sure if they have them, maybe they should ask their VCIO what version they actually have and see exactly. if it's going to be of use to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, exactly. and then another question, um, Michael, just around um, the email delay. So the question is, um, so say somebody wants to, it's the 1st of May and they're going on holidays until the 7th of May, but they want a message to go out on the 5th of May. So the question that they're asking is, well, if I do the delay, the mail, and I set it up to go out on the 5th, would it go on the 5th if I'm not logged in or does it go the next time I'm logged in or how does that work? Yeah, that, that's that's a that's a really good question, and that you know because uh, it does. The the one thing you'll find on here is when you do the delay and then you go to close Outlook, it'll actually give you the prompt saying, you know, you've got a message. The message actually sits in the outbox, but because Outlook is actually closed, it won't send in that there. So you really need to have Outlook, um, you know, turned on and that like you know. So again, there's a couple of things you need to look at on that feature is is there power settings that within your organization that will turn off the machine and that like you know so but again outlook has to be opened you know it, it, you cannot close it and that you know so okay and would it count if it was open on your phone like say you set it up on your email in work oh. and then went on holidays but you had your phone on intermittently would that work yes exactly exactly yeah because okay. it's it's, okay. it's taken from the web side of it like so okay so that probably answers that then so those were the only questions that we have, but there's no worries if anybody has any questions that they come up with afterwards, because you can just, when Kieran sends out the, the webinar, you can just reply back with questions that you have and we can send them on to Michael and Michael can do the honours and answer those questions for us. Yeah, perfect. Like the, the one thing I would say here is, you know, test out some of these features. You know, some of these features people are aware of, you know, but like I have to say, you know, th th there's bits and pieces like on the ribbon. Like I, I was chatting to somebody about signatures. They went in the old way to get signatures. That's up in your actual ribbon and that as well. Like, you know, so like even the message encryption side of it, again, you know, very simple to set up and that the other user doesn't matter what the other user has, you know, they'll get, uh, you know, they don't have to have Office 365 to use it as well okay okay um so just then to close um we hope that you've all enjoyed the webinar and found it useful thank you everybody for attending i just like to take the opportunity to thank kieran who's our tar talented marketing manager for putting the webinar together for us and also i'd like to thank michael and michael warehouse for their valuable input so finally, um, we will be preparing other webinars in the coming months. And if you have any suggestions relating to the content of these future webinars, we'd love to hear them. Or if there's anything else you'd like to discuss, um, please feel free to reply to Kieran when he sends out a copy of the webinar. So that's it. Um, thanks again, everybody. Until the next time. Over Thank and you. out. Thank you.